by the anointing today. La rekete protole bayam prakataleba. Evil is destroyed. Evil is swallowed up. Evil is consumed. Thank you, mighty Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. By your word today, we receive our miracles. Amen. We receive our change of story. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please get seated and give Jesus a big shout of praise. I said give Jesus a big shout of praise. I thought we can do better than that one right now. I thought we can increase the volume right now. <laughs> because after this service, the shout of joy shall become a permanent feature in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Once again, it's my joy and privilege to welcome each one of us into this great service. Our covenant day of exemption. The service that God will be putting a seal, a mark of exemption from all forms of evil upon every worshiper. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. While also we continue our teaching series operating in the supernatural, part 3A in the service. Say me, operating in the supernatural. We have been redeemed, a wonder to our world, not a wanderer. Redeemed, a blessing, not a burden. Redeemed, an asset, not a liability. Redeemed, as one, to be commanding exclamations, not a question mark. But how shall this things be? It can only be by the supernatural act of God. That the natural man receiveth not the things of God. That every child of God is a supernatural personality. Say, I'm a supernatural personality. I'm not an ordinary person. The things they suffer in this world, they are not my portion. Only goodness and mercy is my portion. Every single day of my life, <laughs> That's supernatural. And we have been told that it's a product of the word we receive and believe. Until you receive the word, God has nothing to confirm. He said the Lord was working with them, confirming it with signs and wonders. The child of God is not supposed to be looking for the supernatural. The supernatural, a life of signs, wonders, is supposed to be our personal assistant. He says, shall follow them. Anywhere you go, the supernatural. In your office, the supernatural. At home, the supernatural. But for that to happen, we must know the meaning of miracle. When you lack definition, you suffer deviation. What is a miracle? A miracle is a manifestation of God's response to our faith in his word and his prophets.
A miracle is not an accidental occurrence. A life of wonder. A life that is superior to the natural. A life to be envied. Is a product of God's response to our faith in His Word, in His ways, in His principles, and in His messengers. How do you cross the Red Sea? Red Sea in front. How many of Egypt at the back? Edge in between. And God said, go forward. They had a choice to say, no, this one is suicide. How can we go and drown inside the water? We have a chance of turning back. And they went forward. And as they put their leg on the water, the waters parted to the right and to the left. And the waters were like a wall. And they walked on a flat, dry ground. Not valleys. In a moment, the seabed was leveled. Concrete on the spot. Something was holding the water to the right and to the left. And until they came out of that water, the water was there. And when their enemies entered the water, the water collapsed on them. In this service today, whatever has been pursuing you for evil, water will drown them forever. That is what you call the miracle. You cannot explain how it has happened, but you cannot deny it. They wanted wine. Shame was imminent in that wedding reception. And Jesus said, go and fetch water into the water pot. What was the relationship between water and wine? But they responded to that word. They suspended their natural intellect. Many of us, our intellectualism is the barrier between us and the supernatural. The mind of man is too small when it comes to the miraculous. They could have argued, we wanted wine. Why are you saying we should go and fetch water? But they went, fed the water into the water pot, and from the water pot, next instruction, fed the water from the water pot to the chairman of the wedding reception. And in the process, the best wine surfaced. Shame turned to glory. A miracle is God's response to our, to God's word and the message of his servants. How did that widow of Sarephath escape death? A wicked prophet, in quotes, came I said, woman, I know you're about to eat your last meal. If you want to survive, give it to me. The woman said, excuse me, this is the last meal. He said, well, you have an option. To eat and die or to give and live. And the woman responded because God was speaking to the servant to that instruction. And in the midst of famine, she was feeding fat. The supernatural happened. No one could explain how the supplies was coming. Our response, so it's not enough to hear the word. Every time we come to church, we hear the word. We write down the word. Many of us can even preach the word. 
But what is our response to the word we hear? God's word is not designed to entertain us. God is not out to impress anybody. God's word is to change our story. To take us out of human limitation. Jesus came. In Mark chapter 6, verse 4 to 6. We are familiar with the story. And in verse 6, the scripture says, He could not. Say me, He could not. He wanted to. Verse 5. He wanted to heal them. He wanted to rescue them. He wanted to help them. But he could there do no mighty work. Nothing supernatural. Everything was regular and ordinary. Their faith paralyzed his operations. Their own belief limited the power of God. He could not. There are people here, God wants to give you a miracle job. There are people here, God wants to multiply your income 10 times between now and December. There are people here, God wants to root out that medical verdict in your body. There are people here, God wants to break protocols for your sake. But all belief will stand as a barrier. He could not. They were too familiar with him. Is this not Joseph's son? Is it not the carpenter's boy? So everything he carried could not flow to them. So a prophet is without honor except among his people. So by a prophet, the Lord brought them out. God has not changed. Men are still God's method. Many times to reach his people. So your faith in the word of God and your faith in the scriptural words of his messengers. And for that to happen, you have to receive the person first before you can receive the word. He could not, he could not, unbelief. Unbelief is very, is evil against God. Unbelief is looking at God and pointing to him that God, you are almighty. You can't do this thing. Unbelief is questioning his word. How do I know what I believe? What's your response to God's word? He could not because he didn't believe. So only those who believe in miracles ever experience them. Say, I believe in miracles. So if you believe in miracles, then you believe in the word of God. If you believe in miracles, then you believe in his messengers. Because they can say some outlandish things. A prophet came and said, this time tomorrow, Surplus will replace scarcity. And a learned, maybe graduate from Harvard or Yale, PhD order. He said, King, please don't mind this man of God. We have done all the feasibility studies. We are still processing financing from IMF and World Bank. And to take this thing from New York to Maryland, it will take some days. The man became a victim. In trying to reduce God to the size of man. This time tomorrow, it happened and the man was a victim. I pray for a fresh baptism of the spirit of faith. Amen. So our faith is crucial. Okay, let me try to simplify this definition of faith. If, for instance, now, I call Pastor Deja, I say, Pastor Deja, I'm going to give you uh, one million dollars because I'm going to give you one of these days. Amen. You are not saying amen. amen. 
Okay, he said, thank you. Now, after giving him, what will he say again? Now, the second thank you is gratitude. The first thank you is what? Is faith. He knows this person has the capacity and the will there to deliver it. Even though he has not received the money, he has started calculating on the, on the money. <laughs> when I leave the service today, <laughs> that car, I wanted to buy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why people of faith are always grateful. Amen. When you see anybody depressed, it's a victim of unbelief. Abraham was strong in faith, giving glory to God, even though he has not seen it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. If God has said it, you can go and sleep on it. You're not responding to it. You're not acting on that word. It's unbelief. So as I'm talking right now, what areas of life do you desire a miracle? The question now is, what is the word of God that is powering it? What is your response to God's word? Because this is not abracadabra. God is not a magician. Do you have the word that is ruling your mind and ruling your life on that area of desire miracle? What word is governing your health? I love that testimony of testifier. That's it. I said, I'm not on medication. It's not by accident. What word is God confirming to be sure that you are sickness free? What word are you operating by to ensure you are prospering? What word are you operating by that can be sure you are exempted from all evil? The grace to receive the word, be able to receive it today. Amen. Now, quickly this morning, how do I operate in the supernatural? We have been looking at several keys to do all of that. And today we are saying, to flow in the supernatural, you must be committed to kingdom advancement endeavors. So make kingdom advancement endeavors. You know, in Psalm 34, verse 10, it said, They that seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. And miracles are good. Signs and wonders are good. You are not stressing. You are not stressed. Yet things are working for you. You yourself don't even know how things are working. But things are working for you. So those who are interested in the things of God don't lack miracles. Miracles are the handiwork of God. So if you are not interested in what concerns God, forget about miracles. What is in need for God? And may I say this also, one of the principal purposes of miracles, signs and wonders, and the supernatural is the advancement of the kingdom. Is what? You know, in John chapter 6, verse 2, the scripture says, multitudes believed when they saw the miracles. A great multitude followed him when they saw his miracles. There are people who will never believe the gospel except they see signs and wonders. And in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 7, the Bible says, of the increase of his government, there shall be what? There shall be no end. So God is interested in increases, expansion, and enlargement of his kingdom. So any child of God who is not interested may not partake of it. It's always a choice. I lay before you life and death. I lay before you the natural life and the spiritual life. Pick one. So it's either you embrace the opportunity for kingdom advancement or you ignore it. God has a place at the top for all of us. God has a life of wonders for all of us. But not all of us are seeing them because not all of us are responding to the demands of what to make it happen. So kingdom advancement pursuits is a major platform to operate the supernatural. 
a major, major platform. And quickly, we look at three avenues of kingdom advancement pursuits. Number one is soul winning. Say me, soul winning. I'm not hearing somebody right now. Soul winning. We had a testimony this morning now that son of Abraham, a student, a doctoral student at John Hopkins University, was indebted as a student to pay. He said, but he received instruction. And he engaged in aggressive soul winning. Say me, aggressive soul winning. <laughs> so you can't tie naturally what's the meaning of scholarship with soul winning. You can't relate it. Just as you can't relate how bones grow in the womb of a with a child. What makes a child? There's nothing bony about it. But by that aggressive soul winning, all his financial struggles over. Similar testimony, another person who was a doctoral student went to an interview, and in the interview, they said, they were after the, a medical student wanted to do a PhD. And in the interview, they said, well, what have you done in the past few years that have showed that you are a productive person? They said, well, in our church, we are involved in evangelism. And uh, I do so many if I have converts. They said, what do you mean? They said, I have converts. Okay, can you give us their number? He was giving them number off head, same off head. In interview, medical, not a spiritual interview, <laughs> medical profession. After I gave them some number, he said, ah, if you can be committed to something like this, then you're committed to our business. They now gave him scholarship that will cover for him, he was single, his wife and four children. As a single person, he has already secured the destiny of his children. By soul winning, by soul winning. We have seen too many people who, are, who engage in soul winning and things change for them. So every child of God is ordained to be a soul winner. If you are not a soul winner, you don't know what you are missing. If you are a soul winner, you are sponsoring joy in heaven. And joy is not something you can buy in any supermarket. No matter your nation, there are too many depressed people around town. Luke 15, verse 7. Every time you are instrumental in making joy to happen in heaven, then you can't lack joy in your life. People don't lack what they give. If you are part of making joy to happen in heaven, heaven will fill your life with joy. So if you are lacking joy, what do you do? Go for soul winning. Soul winning is a cure to shame. John 15 verse 8, he said, when you bear much fruit, he said, hearing is my father glorified. And when God is glorified, I said John 15 verse 8, in, when you bear much fruit to the kingdom, that means shame is wiped off. There's no supermarket, there's no organization where they can give you allowance of a shameful life. Soul winning. Your prayers are answered on the ticket of soul winning. John 15 verse 16. He said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. That should go forth and do what? And bring forth food, and that your food should remain. And when you engage in this type of thing, what will happen? You will ask God for anything. Say me for anything. anything. That's a blank check. And your father will do it for you. So those who do soul winning as a lifestyle, don't struggle on the altar of prayers. All this go from one mountain, one church to another church, one forest to another to be looking for. No. Miracles are God's response to his word. How do we respond to the word? That's the number one greatest thing. There's nothing you do on heart here that will make God to be joyful apart from so winning. If you like, get $100 trillion job. It's no big deal to God. Let the dead rise. It's no big deal to God. But when a soul is one, 
Heaven goes agog. There's celebration in heaven. And you can't make heaven to celebrate and you are stranded on earth. See, I receive grace. To be a soul winner. As a lifestyle. Can you say amen to that? So every soul winner is empowered to command the supernatural. We are empowered to be on the go, not to sit down. Signs don't follow those who sit down, who just come to church on Sunday mornings, hear the message, say the loudest amen to all the prayers, and do nothing to what concerns the kingdom of God. You will see or not. Number two, kingdom advancement platforms to command the smile. Praying kingdom advancement prayers. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. That is, on your own, personally, praying in the secret that Father, save souls. Father, everyone in this region who is here to meet with you or your loved ones or family members, take their name to God in prayers. Break the hold of the enemy over their lives. Father, next Sunday service, next Wednesday service, let sinners be converted. You have your concerns, you have your needs, but you put them aside. And you carry God's own on your head. Then God will carry your matter on his head. Making prayer investment, not prayer expenditures. Every time you pray for yourself, what are you doing? Prayer expenditure. Every time you are praying for the kingdom, what are you doing? Prayer investment. A lot of people, because of the prayer expenditure, they're already in red when it comes to prayers. There's no nothing on account. He said, your father who sees you praying in the secret will do what? We reward you. It's an investment. When you pray for yourself, there's no, it's no investment. It's a prayer expenditure. Now, let me say this. How does it apply to the supernatural? Every time you are praying, you are interacting with God. You are doing what? In Luke chapter 9, verse 29, he said, as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. And his raiment became white and glistering. He was transfigured. He began to reflect the celestial, the heavenlies. He said, he that walketh with the wise shall be what? So every time you are involved in praying, you are transfigured spiritually. There is a supernatural alterations for your spirit man. Hmm. When that happens, you can assess divine direction. He said, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. You can find the way to go in life. Because your spirit man is alive. is interacting with God in prayers. You don't take steps of regret in life. That's one benefit of praying. There's a product of praying and there's a process of praying. When you are praying, things happen to you. Many of us are just focused on the product of prayer. As he prayed, things were happening to him. His spirit man was being impacted. So, your spiritual life is transfigured. Your mental life is transfigured. Those who are prayerful don't have ordinary minds. They are like the Hebrew boys. He said they were found to be ten times better in all matters of learning. You can't be labeled as stupid or dummy when you are prayerful. And using your mind to pray. Because there are people, when they are praying, their mind is not there. As they are praying, even though their mouth is speaking, their mind is, when I get to, I'm going to eat a um, burger after this, after this. 
Am I complicating? So it impacts on our mentality. Ten times better. Show me ten times better. That's your new realm. I said that's your new realm. When you are prayerful, it also transfigures your physical body. See my physical body. We know the story of Moses. When Moses took time to pray, by the time he was coming back, body has changed. The Bible says his natural force was not abated. His eye didn't grow dim. The body has been divinized. Divine nature has been transmitted in the course of prayers to his body. We know the story of Daniel. He was always praying three times in a day. So the body has been divinized. When lions saw him, they said, we can't eat this one. You know, he was prayerful with all these uh, three other boys. Should have mentioned Abednego. When they threw them into the fiery furnace of fire, their body had been fireized. <laughs> fire could not burn them. Even the smell of fire could not be smelled on their body. Even their hair was intact. They have been interacting with the heavenlies. We know the story of Paul. He said, I pray more than you all. A venomous beast fastened itself to his arms. You couldn't bite him. He shook it to the fire. So you don't know what you are missing when you are not prayerful. Prayer is you are not helping the God or you are not helping church or you are not helping the pastor. Who are you helping? I'm the principal beneficiary of my prayers. So stop dodging prayer meetings. Take time because the, the product, the things you get when praying, you can't get it in other place. You can't. And anybody can pray. If you can't go out to win source, you can go up in prayers. If you are challenged physically to go out, nothing can challenge you in praying up in your house. I want to say this to us. Let there be no church service again where you don't offer a word of prayer for that far before you go. Because when you do that, you become a first partaker of any blessing that will happen in that service. For the husband man that laboreth must be what? Father, let the service of today answer for everyone. Exempt everyone from all evil. God said you are number one on the list. The scriptures cannot be broken. God only respects his word, not our activities. So let's act based on God's word. Let's act based on God's word. Now that's number two. Number three, very quickly, I have to move very fast. I said number one is soul winning. Number two is what? Prayers. And number three is financial stewardship. Say me financial stewardship. Hear me. In Zechariah chapter 1, verse 17, he said, My cities through prosperities shall what? Expansion of the kingdom is not just expensive, it is highly, it is too expensive. Let me put it that way. Those who are propagating all manner of funny, funny junks outside there, they, they, they walk as if they are working to propagate gay. All manner of things. They can spend their last time on it. But Christians who have the right gospel, they are keeping the money. It takes money to occupy social media. It takes money. As we are here now, thousands of dollars have been spent every service here. My city is through prosperity. So, any child of God that wants to enjoy financial wonders, supernatural supplies, not to be a victim of financial setbacks in the world, must follow God's teachings on prosperity. Number one, that whatever you have in your hand is not your own. He said, the silver is mine and the gold is mine. Who owns it? So each one of us, we are not owners, we are only stewards. And for stewards, we have to be faithful. God has a budget for anything we want to do, but he's looking for trusted hands. Looking for who? Trusted channels through which he will pass his silver and the gold through. Many of us know that scripture. 
that the silver belongs to him, the gold belongs to him, but we are acting as if we are the owner. Hello? We act as if we are the owner. There's a man called Al Jirotoloni. In the Second World War, God used him to supply 50% of the earth moving equipment they used. A Christian. He was giving God 90% of all his income. How many percentage? 90%. He said, it's not how much I give to God. It's how much of God's money I retain for myself. Did you hear that? It's not how much I give to God, but what? How much of God's money I keep to myself. If that scripture, Agai chapter 2 verse 8, is not correct, no verse of scripture is correct. John 3.16 will not be correct if Agai 2 verse 8 is not correct. Who owns the silver? Who owns the gold? That's why no stingy believer has a financial future. God's method is you give. Luke 6, 38, we heard it in the court uh, offering time. Give. Respond to that word first. And it shall be given to you. What? Good measure. Pressed down. Shaking together. Reason why people are not given, they don't trust the word of God. They don't trust God. Inability to give is a trust issue. That is this word correct? Financial stewardship. <laughs> that whatever you have in your hand, that God gave it to you. And it will be your privilege to say, Lord, you gave it to me. So let me do it. Luke 16. Hmm. Um, Luke chapter 12, verse 11, sorry. God's wealth is only committed to those who can trust. So each one of us will be writing test. Say me test. Test of faithfulness at everybody's level. Say, who shall commit to your trust the true riches? Can God trust somebody here? If somebody here see one million dollars, what will happen? Will you still be coming to church every Sunday? No, don't answer me. God knows. He will check you, say, if I give this my daughter one million dollars, ah. He'll be having angover every Sunday morning. <laughs> you will pass the test. Amen. So God is not looking for who to help him, but who to bless. Because he's the owner of the silver and the gold. So don't just be a, 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 a giver anyhow. Be a consistent giver. Have what I call the ministry of giving. Say me the ministry of giving. America is great today because the forefathers of America were givers and they are still practicing it. You don't lack what you give. So to become a financial wonder, be a certified giver to God, the cause of God, the house of God, the people of God. Look at it in Psalm 41, verse 1 to 3. He said, blessed is he that considered the poor. He said, the Lord would defend him in trouble. He said, it will keep him on the bed of affliction. So what's the correction? That's why I call it, it's a miracle. So we can't use our mind. You can, you, can, you can give your way out of any challenge of life. The grace to be a giver. May somebody see me today. Amen. Today is our current day of exemption. Sebaniah chapter 3, verse 15, becomes a reality for everyone here. If you agree, shout a stronger amen. amen. Say, the Lord has taken away thy judgment. He has cut down thy enemy. Even the Lord is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not what? Okay, do it this way. Say, Isaac, Falaji, and family shall not see evil anymore. Oh, I'm not hearing my name now. 
Say it very confidently right now. Say it loudly right now. He said, God will confirm your word. I thought you are seeing the body right now. Say, Isaac, for Lagi and family, we will not see evil anymore. No matter the kind of evil befalling this world, from this service today, I will not see it. I will not feel it. Economic evil, political evil, accident evil, spiritual evil, marital evil, financial evil, academic evil, career evil, business evil. I, Isaac Folaji and family, I my generation, and everyone connected to me, we will not see evil again. Today is my day. The last day I will ever know evil. If you agree with that, shout a stronger amen. amen. So, spiritual understanding is vital to command in the supernatural, particularly to be free from evil. God has an agenda of exempting his people from evil as we saw it even in Genesis. Genesis 47, verse 15 to 27. There was evil in the land, money faded in the land, but the people of God were enjoying it. We saw it in Egypt. The death of cattle, the swarm of flies, hail and tempest, gross darkness, sudden death. But the people of God are exempted. God has not changed. Say me, God has not changed. Things were going wrong for the world, but God's people were exempted. You will be exempted. Amen. Even in the end times, things, the Bible says, the enemy will be doing more wickedness because he knows his time are what? Short. He said, in the last days, there will be famines, there will be scarcities. He said, this shall be the beginning of sorrows. Matthew 24, verse 7 and 8. But you will not be part of those evil. Amen. I said, you will not be part of those evil. Amen. He said, there will be famines, pestilences, in diverse places. No nation of the world will be exempted. No nation will be safe except in God and in covenant. So it's time to take cover in the covenant. Say, I will take cover in the covenant. No one here will struggle again. How then do we actualize our exemption rights? Very quickly, number one, be born again. How do I experience exemption from all evil? Be born again with evidence of the fruit of the Spirit. Be properly born again. Be genuinely born again. Not just coming to church. He said, examine yourself. You'll be in the faith. He said, by their fruit we shall know them. Do you have the fruit of the Spirit? Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Those are the things we used to know whether someone is in the faith. It's not coming to church. Going to your car garage doesn't make you a car. Going to enter your swimming pool doesn't make you a fish. So coming to church doesn't make you a Christian. It is accepting Christ and having fruits. He said, love. If you are truly born again, you will love God. If you are truly born again, you will love the things of God. If you are truly born again and the things of God don't move you, your salvation has question marks. Let's have scriptural parameters to determine who is born again. He said, love, joy. If you're a victim of depression, it's putting question marks on your salvation. Because there's a deposit of joy inside of you when you're born again that can overwhelm whatever challenges. I'm a child of God, so no matter the challenge, nothing can overwhelm me. I am growing in the fruit of the Spirit. Peace, you can go through. Those are, the, those are the parameters to those who are born again. Number two, how do I actualize my exemption right to be free from all evil? Have a revelation of your exemption rights in Christ. Have a revelation. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 19, he said, for we know we are of God. Say, I know I am of God. So you have to know it. And that the whole world lieth in wickedness. Know that because you are a child of God, you are a peculiar person. 
First Peter chapter 2, verse 9, that your case is different. You are in the world, but you're not of the world. Whatever is the evil, the calamity, the sorrows, the untimely death, the sicknesses, the plagues, the scarcity, the economic crunch, in the world, it's not your portion. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 17. He said, the portion of Jacob is not like them. 17, verse 10, 17. Please, get that scripture. He said, the portion of Jacob is not like them. So, it doesn't matter how many people are suffering. It's minus you. Amen. Oh, I'm not hearing your amen. amen. When others are closing down, you'll be opening more branches. Amen. When people are crying, you shall be smiling. Amen. When they are begging, you shall be supplying. Amen. When they say there's a casting down, you shall be saying what? Amen. Have a revelation. Have a revelation. We know, I know. Say, I know. I know. Job 5.22. He said, you'll be smiling and laughing at destruction and famine. You won't join them to carry a long face. You'll be laughing. Because it won't affect you. Amen. Your comfort will multiply. Amen. I tell people, I say, no matter what's happening in this world, my comfort and luxury will be increasing. Amen. Have a revelation. I am in the world, but I'm not of this world. I am seated in heavenly places. My economy is not affected by natural economy. I'm operating a supernatural economy. It's a new day for somebody here. Yeah. Number three, stay in love with God. Say, I will stay in love with God. How do I know? Romans 8.28. He said, for we know that all things, say me all things, work together for them that do what? Work together for good, not for evil. So anything happening around you, which you turn for your good. I said, it will be for your good. I love God, so I'm serving God. I am too useful to be wasted. I am too useful to God to be wasted. You can't say you love God, you are not serving him. The level to which you serve is the level to which you be exempted. There are people who are only serving God for what they get from God. God knows them. And he has made up his mind to disappoint them. In Malachi chapter 3 verse 17, he said you will know you would descend. I don't know whether they have what they call seven up here in uh, America. Where I came from, they would call seven up. They have a motto. Say, the difference is what? That there's a difference between O and Q. That a time is coming. You are going to know the difference between those who are serving God and those who are not serving Him. He said, I will spare them as a man spared his own son. That served him. So there are serving sons, there are serving daughters, and there are non serving sons and non serving daughters. Please, respectfully, let me ask your neighbor, are you a serving son or a serving? Are you a serving daughter? Are you a bench warming daughter? Are you just a child of God that come to church and, and collect all the amen and go home and not serve God? Ask your neighbor, don't be afraid, now ask your neighbor. Which one do you belong to? <laughs> See, I will serve God. Number four, engage the covenant of seed time and harvest. Engage the covenant of seed time and harvest. In Psalm 37, verse 19. Can you please give me the NLT version? New Living Translation. You can be exempted from economic no matter your nation. Poverty is not a citizen of any nation. In every nation, there are poor people. Is somebody there? He said, they will not be disgraced in our times. If you are down, one shout the strong guy. <laughs> he said, even in farming, they will do what? For those who are engaging in the covenants of seed time. Nobody here will be seen financial disgrace. Look at the next uh, scripture, the CEV, the CEV version. He said, they won't be in trouble when times are bad. They will have plenty. When what? Your family will have plenty. Amen. I said your family will have plenty. Amen. That is exemption. Exemption. And money is critical because money answers all things. 
Money answers all things. No one will be poor here. Amen. Develop a covenant exemption mentality, number five. I need to close. A covenant exemption mentality, Proverbs 23, verse 7. As a man thinketh, no matter what is happening, minus me, my case is different. That should be your language. Don't allow your mind to be out of control. Don't allow your mind to entertain thoughts of evil. He said, not one evil shall befall you. Let your mind be governed by God's word. He said, a thousand shall fall at your side, and ten thousand at the right hand side. He said, only with your eyes you will see them, but they will not come near you. Say, I received that word. So, let the word of God control your mind. He said, guard up the loins of your mind. If you can't stop the thought, you can't stop the happening. If you can stop the thought, you can stop the happening. So, stop thinking evil. Number six now. Understand the mystery of the anointing oil is ordained as a seal of exemption from the evils of the day. The anointing. Say me the anointing. Yeah. Psalm 105, verse 13 to 15. It said, touch not my anointed. Touch not my anointed. As the oil comes upon us today, each one of us become a touch not personality. Yeah. Evil will not touch your family. Yeah. Evil will not touch your career. It will not touch your body. It will not touch your finances. Amen. From today, it shall be goodness and mercy. Amen. From today, it shall be going forward. Amen. When others are begging, you are supplying them. Amen. When others are weeping, you are laughing. Amen. Stand to your feet right now. Now raise your voice and declare your takeaway from the service today. Raise your voice that from today, I'm a peculiar person. I'm to show for the praises of God. Not one evil. I am in this world, but I am not of this world. The whole world lieth in wickedness. No wickedness of the wicked. No, no wicked economic system. No wicked institutional system can afflict me. My case is different. My case is different. I am born of God. My portion is different. <laughs> My story is different. Everything about me is getting better. No setback. No misfortune. No moving around in circles. No weeping. No, no sorrow. Only celebration. Only mercies. Only goodness. I thought you are speaking right now. I thought you are speaking right now. What you say is what you see. What you say is what you get. He said, you shall have what you say. 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 What are you saying? What are you saying? Maritally, no evil. Professionally, no evil. In my body, no evil. In my work with God, no evil. In my going out, in my coming in. I am exempted. I am exempted. I am exempted from woes and calamities. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, there's a testimony. I pastored our church in Potako River, in Nigeria. We had them at Shilo. I'm on Dickie Park Pata. I know the man. Remember our church in Potako? Just after Shilo Saturday, where they started, the team was, my case is different. There was a fire accident in the filling station, in the gas station, how you call it here. Now, the, filling, the gas station was totally burned down. Many vehicles burned down. And the car of this man was in the midst. Just fresh from the anointing service, on a Saturday, not a scratch on his car. <laughs> All those things were burnt. Now, by reason of that, many policemen gave their life to Christ. They said, this one is a miracle. That's what we call the supernatural. So, to be lost in the crowd, to be experiencing what people in the world are suffering. No, it's contrary. So, by the anointing today, no matter what is happening around you, not one evil shall befall you. Amen. Not one evil shall befall your children. Amen. Not one evil shall befall your siblings. Amen. Not one evil shall befall your in-laws. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. 
But before we do the anointing, quickly this morning, there are people here, you know yourself, you are in the world, and you are of the world. You are not yet born again. You have not given your heart to Christ. Or you are still doing things that belong to the world. That if Jesus should come now, you know you're not going to make it. There's a call for you to run for your life. A call to run for safety. A call to run for exemption. You want your sins forgiven. You want your name written in the book of life. You want to be a proper Christian with fruit to show. Jesus is calling you right now, not the pastor. He said, come to me. All ye that are labor, all ye that are struggling, I want to give you rest. There's rest for you today. Whatever you are, you know yourself. Don't wait for anybody. You have to do it openly and publicly. I'd like you to carry your bags, your Bibles, and whatever you come to church with. You're in that category, start coming right now. Why I want to sing? Start coming right now. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Today's your day. Today's your day. Keep coming. Please come. Please come very quickly. Please come very quickly. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep myself away. Oh, hallelujah. La recatum prata de baya. To you, Jesus. Ben proto de baya. Wherever you are, keep coming right now. Today's your day. You can't afford to postpone it. Today's your day of salvation. people here right now, you know yourself. Something is telling you, come out. And how that is telling you, stay put. Between God and your mind, who will you follow? So it's time to come out. It's time to make an open show of the enemy. Step out confidently. Nobody will get that choice. Wherever you are right now, start coming. By the authority of Christ, there's rest for you. There's joy for you. There's exemption for you. There's safety for you. Wherever you are, you are giving your life to Christ. Keep coming right now. Why I sing that song? Everybody, why they are coming? Bring out the bottle of water. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. If you are coming, come very quickly. You are giving your life to Christ. You want to be born again. You want your name written in the book of life. double-edged. Please ensure you are born again before this oil touches you. If you want to come, come very quickly. All of us standing as I pray right now. Everybody starts speaking. Father, by this anointing, let the mark of exemption from all evils, spiritual evils, marital evil, professional evils, business evil, academic evil, financial evils, by this anointing, a seal is upon me. A mark of exemption is upon me. No man will trouble me again. No evil will trouble me again. By this anointing, I am free from all evil. By this anointing, everybody, make sure you are praying. Raise your voice while I'm leading this one to Christ. Now, see after me. Please put your right hand over your chest and see after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. Have mercy on me. I believe you came to this world. You died for my sins. You are roasted the third day. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. From today, I will serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Now I know I am born again. Amen. Now let me pray with you, Father. Write a name in the book of life. Keep out in your second coming. The power of sin and Satan is broken. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please open your eyes. Follow this man of God right now. Hallelujah. Now stretch that oil towards this altar right now. Every oil under the sound of my voice is hereby sanctified. Amen. It becomes the holy anointing oil. Amen. Every time you apply this, 
the Spirit of Christ will go to operation. Amen. Whatever you apply this oil upon becomes a touch not entity. Amen. Not one evil will branch your life. Amen. Evil will not branch your house. Amen. Evil will not branch your family. Amen. But this anointing, he said, when the enemy shall come like a flood, the Spirit of God will lift up a standard. Yes. Receive the standard of the Holy Ghost. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Please, in case your neighbor doesn't have to be a good neighbor, just a little, and over your forehead, and begin to declare, by this anointing, I receive a mark of exemption. A mark of exemption. I will not stink. I will not see shame. I will not see death. I will not see sorrow. I will not see stagnation. Raise your voice and declare what you don't want to see. By this anointing, I am exempted. No matter what is happening in the end time, I am exempted from wickedness. I am exempted from accident. Fire accident, vehicle accident, domestic accident, plane accident, no accident of any kind. No sorrow of any kind. No stagnation of any kind. No begging of any kind. No delay, no denial, no rejection, no misfortune, no setback. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, in a short while, we are going to drink this anointing oil. As you take it on your inside, whatever is evil, whatever has to do with sickness, whatever is contrary to glory, strength, health, and vitality, as you take this one, they shall be flushed out. Amen. I was in Madagascar, part of our church many years ago in Madagascar, and somebody, a girl, was born without a private part became a victim of doctors and they brought her to a service like this and was anointed. A private part grew supernaturally. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. So expect something supernatural to happen to you as you drink this anointing. Whatever doctor said was wrong with you or any member of your family, as you stand in God today, that affliction is over. Amen. That disease is over. Amen. Body parts shall be created. Amen. Supernatural surgical operation will take place. Amen. Every malfunctioning organ shall be perfected right now. Amen. Take it as a toast for your total health. Amen. It is done. I say it is done. Amen. If you agree with that, shout it stronger. Amen. Amen. Please get seated, ensure that oil, you apply it to your house, to your offices, to whatever is of interest to you, and they become a touch knot to every work of evil. In the name of Jesus Christ. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ. We have just a few more things to do. Let's take the first time first. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together for Jesus right now. For that powerful word from heaven, clap some more for Jesus. Praise God, fortune is my portion in 2024. In this service this morning, it is my privilege to welcome our own VIP. Are we clapping for Jesus? Who our VIP this morning? Our VIP are those of us that are worshiping with us for the very first time on a Sunday morning and for all returning winners. On behalf of Jesus, the head and owner of this church, I welcome you specially to the Faith Dome, a home of signs and wonders. I want to tell you what is unique about this church. This church is ordained by God, a mountain of divine intervention where every impossible situation of life is cheaply turned into outstanding testimony. Our turnaround God has been at work in this commission for over 43 years. He has been surprising members of this church with unimaginable breakthroughs as they believed. Since God is no respecter of persons, expect the God of favor to visit you also upon this mountain. I want to welcome you today to this favored family. May today be your entry into the realms of divine favor and breakthroughs that will result in the delivery of your long-awaited testimonies. 
Therefore, to all our first-time worshippers, our VIP, and all our returning worshippers here today at the Faith Dome, I say welcome. Church, are we clapping for Jesus? At this time, I want to enjoy all our VIPs to rise on their feet, to carry with them their belongings they brought to church, and come and file in front of the altar area for priestly blessings. Church, let's rise on our feet as we usher them into the front of the altar area. Keep on clapping, keep on clapping as we receive our VIP. Hallelujah. I thought we were clapping better for them. They are coming from everywhere. Hallelujah. They are coming, they are coming. I thought we were still clapping for Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let the church please be seated. We are so excited to have you in our place today. This is the home of science and wonders. Nobody comes to this church hearing the word and putting it to work and remain the same. You have received the word today. This week you shall be visited. This week you have a testimony. So if you are living in town here, please join us and begin to win the way we win. You will never know defeat again. Now as a church, we declare you blessed. Everything you do, we declare it blessed. Everyone that bless you, everyone will bless them. Everyone that attempts to curse you, everyone will curse them. From now, you are exempted from all evils. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we love you. For information that will help us, please, let's follow this man of God right now. God bless you. We love you. Okay. Okay, you are not sure. Don't worry, we just attend to you. God bless. I thought you are still clapping for Jesus right now. Now, quickly, we have two things to do, very important. Now, last Sunday, we said God is doing new things for us as a church. Now, God has not stopped. God is still doing more things for us. If you want to clap, you can clap better for Jesus right now. Hallelujah. Now, first of all, I'd like to 